Happy Tuesday, Floss Tube. Don't usually record on a Tuesday. Usually it's Monday for me, but uh, yesterday was a holiday. We had our Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada. I, my name is Caroline. I record Floss Tube videos in London, Ontario, Canada. So we had a fantastic weekend. It was, uh, it was a little bit touch and go getting there. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, we, if you don't know, if you're, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, we have a cottage my husband built, uh, back in 2000 and he started in 2007. It was done in 2010. That's the reason for the name of this channel off the grid uh, needle arts, because we are indeed off the grid when we're there. And so, uh, my, my father-in-law purchased the land back in the sixties. And, uh, so, so he lives there as well. It's not just us on a little island. Anyways, I digress. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. I am completely discombobulated. So the weather, when we arrived on Saturday morning, we had to wait to leave until first thing Saturday morning because Sarah had uh, university classes up until I don't think she could get away until about 3:30 on Friday, which is a little bit too late to leave because then we would have been crossing in the dark, and we knew it was a bit, we knew it was a bit windy, so we waited until first thing Saturday morning. Uh, my parents were also supposed to come, but they couldn't come at the last minute. My mom has uh, put her back out, so mom, if you're watching, I hope you're feeling better. I'm. If you can see this beautiful shawl that I'm wearing today, my mom made this for me. So, uh, mom, I was thinking about you this morning and I thought, you know, the house was a bit chilly. It was the perfect opportunity to give the inaugural real first wearing of, uh, this beautiful knit that my mom did for me. I cannot remember the name of the pattern. Mom, you'll have to leave me a comment below with the name of the, of the pattern. It's a very unique shape. It's, it's not even asymmetrical. It's very, very interesting. And I'm not even, I'm only wearing it open. I don't have it wrapped because, well, it's also made of a worsted weight wool silk blend and it's very, very, very warm. And so it's the perfect thing to wear. And you know, it's my favorite colors. My mom knows my favorite colors. And so she knit me this beautiful shawl and today's the perfect day to wear it. So I was sad that my parents couldn't come to Thanksgiving, but actually mom and dad, you're probably going to be very grateful that you didn't come because the crossing was, I'm going to say it was the roughest crossing I've ever ever had. Uh, the waves were, my father-in-law didn't inspire me with confidence because when he finally arrived over to the, we call it the rock, um, which I know is also what we call Newfoundland, uh, living, those who live on Newfoundland, they say they they live on the rock. Uh, we call our little piece of property that my father-in-law owns where we park the cars and there's a dock there. We call that the rock. So we, we park on the rock and then he came over to pick us up his boat is actually his boat is from Nova Scotia, which is close, uh, close to Newfoundland out there on the East coast. Uh, it is an ocean going sort of like a little ocean going tugboat. So it's, it's meant for rough weather and waves. And, uh, so he came over to collect us. And when he got over and dot, John helped him dock the boat. He, he said, well, I hope you're ready because that was the most hellish ride ever. And I started to cry. <laughs> what am I going to do? And John turned around and looked at me. He said, well, you could drive back to town and, and get a, get a hotel for the night. Um, but at that point you, I knew that I was supposed to be providing Thanksgiving dinner for five families. So, uh, I knew that they, they took, it was perfectly safe. It was just going to be really, 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 really rough, uh, which I hate. I don't, I don't even like traveling in the boat when it's calm. So this was, uh, this was way out of my comfort zone. So, but I knew I had, I, I, I had to go. I didn't have any choice. I had to go. We couldn't wait because it was only supposed to get worse throughout the day. And that's the thing with Georgian Bay and you can't, you can't, 
predict. I mean, you can look at the forecast and you can, we, we watch the marine forecast very carefully. We check, you know, the direction of the wind, how fast the wind is moving. We know the height of the waves. We know all of that information, but you know, there are various spots on the trip across where, you know, we have to cross over a channel where there is, you know, the waves are going to be worse throughout that section that they might be where it's a little more sheltered. And so long story long, it was, it was rough and I was not happy. So I was, um, I was very relieved when we finally arrived and could unpack. It took us it took us quite a while to get over, which never makes it makes it easier. So, um, however, that was the only downside to the entire weekend weekend, which was a phenomenally good time. This is a tradition that we have been doing at the cottage for the last. Well, I've been going up there for. 28, 29 years, and I think it's been going on as long as that. So I'm going to say 30 years. 30 years. This has been, this has been probably a tradition. Now it it didn't used to rotate amongst the families. There's one family up there, and the sort of matriarch of that family invited everybody over for Thanksgiving, and she hosted it every year. Um, I'm going to say for about 10 years, uh, she hosted it for about 10 years for four families, and. As she got older, the consensus amongst the families was, hey, you know, we should really, we love this tradition, it's so much fun. That's generally the weekend that people start to close up their cottages up there because uh, they're, they're all, everybody's on little islands and it's not, it's not year round until the ice, until it freezes over and you can snowshoe over. But that's sometimes, you know, mid-February. So it is, they are, they are landlocked. So October, middle of October is generally when people start to close up. And so we all decided that we wanted to continue the tradition, but that it wasn't fair on this one woman to have to do it every year. So we decided, you know, because she said, no, 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 I want to keep doing it. And we said, no, I, th I think, you know, let's, let's start to take turns. And so then we started to rotate amongst the four families and we go in a circle, um, depending on where your cottage is and you know where you live, you know which, you know, in four years it's going to be your turn. So our turn came up again this year, and I think the final head count was, was it 28? 28 people? So my parents didn't come, and Sarah's friend who was going to come up, she couldn't come as well. So we, the numbers kind of balanced out because at the last minute, a couple of extra people uh, were able to come. So the fact that we lost a couple, but we gained a couple, we had about 28 in the end. And it was so fun. So now we have five families because we have added one. A new family moved in about three years ago, um, and they're lovely. And and so, it, you know, they're they're close. They they moved in right close to where the the circle is. It's not like we exclude people. There's not a lot of people there. So pretty much everybody who lives in the circle all comes to Thanksgiving dinner, and we've all become very good friends. So we had a new family move into the area. This was their first year of joining us, and it was it was so so fun. I made a turkey, I made a ham, carrots, beans. Uh, it was it was a huge dinner, and the deal is whoever is making the dinner doesn't have to provide appetizers or desserts. So if you're arriving at Thanksgiving dinner, the you will either bring a pumpkin pie or um, you know some kind of uh, cheese platter or a shrimp ring or something like that. So. It was a it was a huge feast. Now I know I'm I'm getting giving a lot of personal information on the front end of the podcast today. I'm getting to the stitching, I promise. I'll try to. It, I'm almost ten minutes in, and I'm blah 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 blah, still yakking. I missed you. I must have really missed you guys. So, uh, anyways, Thanksgiving was totally fun. The crossing back home was still bumpy but not nearly as bad. The wind had died down to about 20 knots. When we crossed over initially, it was probably about 35 knots. Uh, that's, I, I can't translate that into something. If you're, it's hard to describe. 
but the waves were really big. <laughs> the waves were really big. And they weren't quite as big on the way home. So even though it wasn't a comfortable ride home for me, I didn't cry. So win-win and uh, Thanksgiving was a huge success. Yesterday, we, we didn't leave until about noon, so we didn't get home until just after dinner. It was a long ride home. Thanksgiving Monday, everybody's headed home at the same time, so the 400 series of highways in Ontario is just, it's just busy. So you just have to put on your patience hats and grab a Tim Hortons coffee and, uh, and your knitting of, or stitching of choice and enjoy the ride. So overall, very, very good. Uh, yes, so I had mentioned on Friday's video, my Stitch With Me video, I know I'm talking a lot about personal stuff here, but on my Stitch With Me videos, I even, it's, it's, it's a lot of personal information in there. So I'm not gonna rehash a lot of the stuff that I talked about on Friday, but in a nutshell, we were supposed to get a dog last week and it didn't work out. And it was incredibly disappointing incredibly disappointing that, that this particular dog didn't work out for our family because he's a he's a lovely boy he was a three-year-old um, a three-year-old lab American bulldog cross and uh, he was a lovely boy but it didn't work out I talked about it all I talked all about it on Friday's video I also mentioned on Friday's video I'm having a few problems with my gallbladder which is Tons of fun when you're, you know, trying to produce and enjoy a Thanksgiving dinner. So needless to say, the last week and a half or so has been like extreme, uh, <laughs> extreme boot camp for weight loss because I have been terrified to eat anything. <laughs> anything that might trigger um, me to not feel so good. So I'm having some tests done. I am eating as long as I stick to you know it's it's like it's boot camp <laughs> everything is really plain no no if it tastes good don't eat it right so uh so anyways that's still ongoing but again i talked about it all on friday i don't need to get into it again so let's get to the stitching 12 minutes in let's get to the stitching oh my goodness <sighs> okay i don't have any i don't have i didn't finish anything this, this week since the last time I talked to you. Um, I do have some stitching to share, but no FOs, nothing like that. I guess, you know, my mom's shawl is an FO. She finished it, so that kind of counts, right? Uh, because Monday giveaway on a Tuesday. I had two giveaways from last week, and I have two giveaways again today. Uh, these happen over on the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid Facebook group, and anyone is welcome to join. Uh, just a few rules over on, the, on that group. We tend to keep it 99% uh, about stitching and always kind. Generally, you know, if you wouldn't show it or say it to your grandma, we don't uh, show it or share it on that group. There's plenty of other groups that do that are, you know, wonderful Facebook groups. But just for, for the Friday Off The Grid one, we just keep it uh, generally generally low key. So I have two giveaways from last week and I picked the winners already. So let's get to that. First of all, I had, I don't have a baby giveaway this week. I, I know I said I was going to do it. I'm going to take a week off because I have two other giveaways. Anyways, the Dimensions Baby Kit, and this is a full kit. Look at all, all those beautiful colors. So this is the Happy Transport Birth Record those trucks. I had 22 comments on this particular giveaway and the random number generator chose comment number 14 who was Melena Parkins. So congrats, Perkins, excuse me. Congratulations, Melena. And you can please send me your mailing address and I will get this out in the mail to you. And from your comment, it sounds like you have two grandsons who you think will really like this. So I'm really happy that it's going to someone who will stitch it uh, for for people in their life, in people in your life who you love. So that's great. <sighs> okay, giveaway number two was from the amazing Michelle Bendy Stitchy. You know her, you love her. She 
has recently put out some designs. I mean, recently is relative, right? For me, five years ago feels recent. So uh, Michelle, her, her design company is called Bendy Stitchy. And I had 213 comments, 213 people interested. Now, actually, uh, Michelle, I took your comment out because, well, I didn't figure you'd want to win your own chart, but I appreciate that you liked that so many people were enthusiastic about your design. It was Hildy's Brew. So Hildy's Brew is the chart that was up for grabs. I had 213 comments and the random number generator chose a really low number this time. It was comment number 15, which was Diana Lee. So congratulations, Diana. I know that you were super excited about this chart. So I'm really glad that I get to send it to you. And again, thank you, Michelle, for providing me with a couple of extra charts for giveaway. I do believe, now I've been catching up with Michelle this morning. I wa I'm about three, three episodes well, I include Stitch With Me's as episodes. I'm, I still have two more videos to get through of Michelle's. Uh, but as far as I know, she has these now available as PDFs on her, on her website, which you can find at uh, bendystitchydesigns.com. So right there, bendystitchydesigns.com and um, Hildy's Brew. So you can, you can, 213 people wanted this chart you can pop over to her website and I believe now you can buy this as a downloadable PDF. And hopefully I'm not fibbing about that, Michelle. Michelle will correct me if I'm wrong. So super, super cute. So congratulations, Diana. I know you'll love it. <sighs> okay, let's get to today's giveaway. I have two holiday giveaways. And since I was just talking about Michelle, I'm gonna start with her chart first. Her Christmas Noel chart, which she sent me two. So I have one for me and one for you. This is the first chart up for grabs today because I want this to go out so that you have enough time to stitch it for Christmas. Oops, sorry. Just knocked the camera there. It is adorable. Little Starbucks cup in the middle. Doesn't have to stay Starbucks. I know that's a Starbucks cup. And uh, it's adorable. So cute. Okay, so that's chart number one. Again, these will be, I will list these on the Facebook group tonight after this video goes up. Sometimes I forget to do it immediately. It ta you know, it takes about, oh, when, I, when I do these videos, it takes a long time to, from the time I start recording to the time it's actually uploaded on YouTube. And so I say something now and it is, quarter after one. By the time I'm actually ready to post this, it's probably going to be about 8 30, 9 o'clock tonight. So I need to actually remember to do it every week. So tonight, these will be on the Facebook group. This is chart number one. And giveaway number two is the one that I gave a sneak peek, sneak peek of last week from Cheryl, the tiny modernist. And this lovely pattern, let it snow, which is just, it's darling. It's just adorable. So two fantastic charts up for grabs this week, both over on the, oh, and I should give you Cheryl's information. Her website is www.tidymodernist.com. So there you go. You can see that. My camera battery was dead this morning because of being away for the weekend. So I'm recording on my phone. Anyway, okay, that's it for the giveaway. You wanna see what I've been stitching? I've been doing some stitching. Okay, so first of all, I did some work on my pattern from Patty Break, four boys and an nlgirl.ca. Um, Patty is from Newfoundland. And uh, she designed the pattern for the Evertote summer kit, which I've been working on. Did you hear the little bell? Did you hear the little jingle? That's Sasha. Sasha has resumed her fall, late fall habit of, of the daily visits to come and uh, have a snack and a nap at my house during the day. So it's been, it's been lovely to have her here. So she may come over and visit in a minute. 
So Patty Brake's pattern was, uh, was included in with the Evertote Summer Collection this year, and I have plans to stitch my own version. Now I gave the test, I gave the model stitch back to my friend Robin a few weeks ago, and the pattern doesn't have a cover page. So I can't, I'll try to insert a picture here of what it's going to look like when it's done. The, the mo Robin stitched the model on a 14 count Ada. I am doing mine on a, is it 28 count? Feels like, it feels like a 28 count. I might be wrong, it might be 32. Uh, it's a Lugan, a Brittany fabric that was actually dyed by Patty herself. So there's the letter U I've just started here and I finished off the Tiffel. So beautiful. And then there's the letter B and then EE -E for a bumblebee. And it's uh, the saying is beautiful you. So uh, not a ton of work put into it, but definitely uh, nice to see some progress. And I just love the pale pink color of this, of this fabric. It's so pretty. So Patty, I might have to I might have to get you to dye some more for me because I really, really like it. So this was the first thing that I worked on. And then I also, last Friday night, um, I, I worked on Savan during my Friday off the grid uh, six hour stitching party. I also did a lot, I, we were watching, well, I was watching Great British, British Bake Off last Friday night and She's just clanging her, her snack dish around. Uh, I was just totally engrossed in the show and I didn't get as much stitching done as I should have because then I would go on Facebook and I would look at all the pretty pictures and then I would watch British Bake Off. And so the progress that I made on Savon, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna wait to share that with you until there's a little bit more because right now it's such a huge design that it doesn't look a whole lot different unless there's a lot of progress. So I'll show you instead my progress on the Abbey Rose Designs Yuletide on Thistle Hill because this was the other piece that I worked on during the uh, stitch with me and I finished, I finished the bottom border. So obviously I still need to finish in the, uh, I can't remember, it's called Wood Trail, it's a Gentle Arts, I'm pretty sure. So that needs to come on along here, and, but, but that's how wide it is. It's, it's no wider than that. So clearly I did a terrible job measuring my fabric, clearly, but it's all good better too much than not enough. So that is how wide it is. So it's not huge. The entire piece will, I won't have to move the, move the Q-snaps, obviously, since I don't have any other fabric on either side. So that'll be good. So yeah, made some decent progress on that. And then I also, uh, once we got home last night, I wanted to, put a few lengths of thread into the Sarah Dutnell sampler, which this was a kit from the Scarlet Letter that I purchased last year. So there is, she's a big girl. That's what she's gonna look like when she's done. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I started in the top left corner and I'll show you my progress first and then I'm going to talk about the pattern a bit. Now, I have this on a K's frame and it's a little bit wobbly because the bars are so wide, but anyways, I'm making do. So there's, there's my progress so far with the border. So not a ton, but definitely super, super pretty. I love the colors. Oh, hello. Hello, Sasha. It's one strand of floss over two. This is a 35 count. Uh, linen and it's one strand of silk. The kit that I purchased came with all of the 
Soie Delger silks to finish it. Now, I love everything about this project. Almost. And up until last night, I wouldn't have had a single complaint until I started looking carefully at Let me show you that again. So you can see I have stitched the outline of this leaf here. This is gonna be another one down here. They're all over the place. These leaves are filled in with satin stitch. So it's impossible to tell from the photo, but they're completely filled in with, with satin stitch. Now, I was trying to find which color to use for the satin stitch because I like to complete as I go. Unless it's beading. Beading I will do at the very end for an entire piece. But for this kind of thing, I would like to sort of complete it as I, as I go and not have to save all of the satin stitch for the end. Now I'm gonna show you a page. It, there's so little pattern on here that I don't feel bad showing this on the screen so that you can get an idea of something that I'm going to struggle with a little bit. So this right here, see where it says back stitches? See those colors there? Six shades of brown. Those are the keys to tell you which colors to use for your satin stitch. Pardon me, Sasha decided to just go and sharpen her claws on my couch. So had to, uh, she's such a monkey. You're a monkey. Yes, you are. Okay. Um, many of these satin stitches are not right next door to each other. Now she's sharpening it on my chair. Oh, she's naughty. Okay. These are not right next door to each other. Do you see how similar they are? Well, I'm looking at the chart and I'm thinking, how the heck do I know which one it is? So anyways, I discovered, and this was last night that I was trying to see, and I, I, I just couldn't see it. This morning when I had a little bit of, I had enough time to, to enjoy a podcast and uh, put in one more length of thread before I had to, you know, sort of get going for my day to get Nicholas ready for school and stuff. And so in the light of day, so in daylight, you can sort of tell the difference a little bit more easily. So when I had figured out a couple of them, I actually went with my pencil directly on the pattern and I wrote them in which ones I thought they were. So I'm a little concerned about that because if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, potentially I could, you know, choose the wrong color and then run out of floss perhaps. So I'm a little worried about that. So if anyone has, has, if anyone else out there is watching this who has stitched Sarah Dutnell as a kit from the Scarlet Letter and you have any sage words of advice for me on this, on that, those satin stitches and determining which color is which, I'd appreciate it. So other than that, it's like the perfect storm of a project. I love the fabric. I love the thread. I love the pattern. It's all like when you're, it's one of those projects you're working on it. You're like, Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be so good. And it is, I love it. So, so yay. So I can put up with a little bit of, of malcontent over, you know, a few satin stitches. No biggie, no biggie. I'm just going to put in a short little ad from YouTube right here. The revenue that comes in from the ads that are played on YouTube help me cover all the costs of the giveaways that I send out every week. So I appreciate that you let them play through. And I will be right back and finish up sharing my other couple of whips with you. So back in a minute. I've got uh, uh, one more whip that I've been working on and this was another Ink Circles piece. I finished the Forest Flower last week and I, I've mentioned, I've, I've shown this one, this pattern before. So it's not a surprise that I started it. However, I did finally start it. So it's Damask Square 
that's the pattern that it will look like when it's done. But mine is not ecru on a dark colored linen. Mine is blue on a pre-finished square. Oh, let me flip that around. Isn't it pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. It's so beautiful. This is a dinky dye silk that I'm using. Two strands over two. I, I'm pretty sure this is a 28 count. Uh, this is a pre-finished table square made by Zweigart. And I purchased this from, from Kathy and Neil at Thread and I. She is, her, her nibs is ready to go back outside again. I'll give her a minute, we'll see. Uh, so it's uh, 28 count, two threads over two. And uh, I will insert the name of the Dinky Dyes, the, the exact color name. I wanna say Midnight, but I don't think that's right. But it's this beautiful blue. And this is destined, this is a gift. I, I have wanted to put this together for a while now for a special gift for a very good friend. And uh, so I'd like to finish this up in the next in the next little while so that I can get it out the door in time for uh, for it to be a Christmas gift so beautiful um, so yes it should just fit it should I counted see and it's geometric so it's gonna be the same all the way around so it's it was really fun to stitch and that's pretty much all I worked on this weekend at the cottage when I when I had time that and some some knitting and that was it okay sorry I had to pause the video and go and let Sasha outside because she was becoming rather insistent okay I have a little shop update today uh, first of all I thought I would share with you a couple of bags that I was working on finishing up this morning that need to go um, that need to go out in the post so first up this one has been around uh, for a while but I am starting to run a little low on this print and I won't be getting any more of it in so if you've had your eye on this uh, black and white fabric I have a little bit left so I can make I can make a few more uh, but this will be out soon ish so if you were thinking of grabbing one of these now's probably the time so it comes with a matching notions pouch it's a beautiful sort of um, pen like pen and ink kind of drawing and then the inside is uh, black and white black and white squares very simple very it's I like it it's a bit it's elegant and uh, just really pretty so again I have this available in both uh, medium I think I've got four mediums listed and I think I can do three or four more large and then um, I, I'm saving a little bit of this print to make some large knitting totes and then that's it then it's gone 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 uh, so that's that's the first one I wanted to show you so that one is on its way out the door the next bag that is still actually I'm I'm sort of in the process of finishing this one off but this is the it's too peoply outside bag and I only have a few left of these as well and I think only in the medium size so this is this is the print paired with the accent and as you can see this one still needs to be put together but the zips in top stitching is done so this is this is also this was uh, ordered by a customer so I'm just finishing this one up but it's so it's just such a lovely pattern I thought I would show it off comes with matching notions pouch and then the lining on this one is uh, simply a an off-white 100% um, cotton slightly thicker it's not a muslin it's thicker than a muslin I love a plain lining because then I can see everything in my bag clear, clearly so it tends to be my go-to for for choosing lining fabrics only because it's my preference I don't do it all the time but I'm probably 65% of the time I will put a crisp um, 
plain lining on the inside. Anyways, so it's too people outside. So that one is heading out the door. The next bag I have to show you is kind of an oopsie bag, but not really. However, uh, this one I've shown before. This is the uh, road trip bag, and you'll notice that's the accent. This is supposed to have the accent fabric on the top <laughs> because that's how I liked it was to have the accent fabric on the top and then the black zipper sort of peeks out from the top. So I put this one together <laughs> incorrectly. <laughs> so this bag, it's a, it's a large flat. So it fits an 11 inch square Q-snap with room to spare. And it also comes with a matching notions pouch. This bag is going to be in the one of a kind section and it's going to be $5 off because it's, it's, it's kind of an oopsie, but not really an oopsie. Do you know what I mean? It's perfectly good. There's nothing else wrong with it other than the accent is on the bottom instead of being on the top. So if you had your eye on this bag and you want to save five bucks, well, here's your chance. So again, this is going to be in the one of a kind uh, section. Last but not least, I found two cutout sets of the chickadee fabric that I had from last year two medium flat sets. I don't know what I was saving them for. No idea. I was clearly saving them for something, but I have no recollection of what that was for. So they are now made. And both of them, I have two medium flat sets with notion co coordinating notions pouch, chickadees. So sweet. Look at those chickadees. I only have two, that's it. That's all she wrote. I only have two of these sets. I have no idea what I was saving them for, um, but we might as well send them out to their new homes. I am also going to be listing these two sets in the one of a kind section because I only have two. So I guess they're two of a kind, but I sold the other ones last year. So technically they're kind of one of a kind, I guess. Anyways, lining on this one beautiful white nice and clean <sighs> so pretty okay and that's it I have some other bags coming I was tempted to maybe do a separate shop update video this week but I don't think I'm going to since it's already Tuesday I might do that next week instead because I have some other newer fabrics that are going to be slowly making their way into the shop over the next two weeks before I launch the uh, holiday collection. Okay, so that's it. I have just one more little, uh, little bit of a sneak peek on something that is very exciting that is coming. If you are a longtime member or even a brand new member of the Friday Off The Grid group, uh, this may possibly interest you. So it's, um, I'm just going to put in a little video tease of something that's going to be coming to the shop in just a little bit of time. Not that long. So I'm very excited about it. It was super fun to plan and um, watching the execution of it come to life has been so fun. So. Uh, I will put a little video link in here, not a link, sorry, a little video clip and uh, you can you can get a, a hint, a pretty big hint of what I'm talking about that's coming soon. So that's it for me. Happy Tuesday. I hope that you are having a great week and I hope that if uh, you know you you have some t some free time that you're able to spend that with your stitching as we love to do. And I will definitely see you on Friday for a Friday Off The Grid Stitch with me. And that's it. Happy week, happy stitching. Take care. So it is now 8.45 p.m. And almost right after I finished 
recording this morning's video, which I still have to edit and put together, I got a uh, bunch of text messages from a friend of mine, uh, Lisa in Sarnia. And she said, we think we found the perfect dog for you. And they were right. And so I'd like to introduce you to Luna. She's six years old and <laughs> she's got a bit of a wriggle bottom. She's six years old, she's an American Bulldog mix and we are 100% completely smitten. So I'll have, uh, I'll try to put some video or some pictures in after here, a couple of the pictures that we've taken of her so far. and. Uh, and I'll have some more information for you on Friday about her, but what a day, what a day it's been. So it's, uh, she's fitting in beautifully. Pretty happy, happy days. So now happy stitching. <laughs> have a great week guys.